Okay, so the Montreal Canadiens have so many good prospects that have a boatload of numbers that I feel like, because of the sheer quantity of guys that exist, once in a while we may start to lose track on other players that had also taken up that conversation in the past. No, we're not talking about Cole Caulfield here today, but instead, we are heading back over to a steal of a draft pick from 2021. A guy who, for the majority of 2021-2022, we were all clamoring about, we were all talking about, we were saying this guy was a steal, this guy was amazing, he was this, he was that, he was everything, the best thing since sliced bread. But with Lane Hudson's emergence in 22-23, I feel like that guy sort of took the main spotlight when it came to Canadians fans gushing over Canadians prospects. But in today's video, what I wanted to do was revisit that name from last year that we were making videos about endlessly. Because when it comes to how he has performed so far in the QMJHL playoffs, this has ultimately been the biggest sort of testament that we could have hoped for when it comes to production. Let's head over to the 2021 draft in the fifth round and talk about the guy taken with the 150th overall pick, Josh Wah. And I say that a little bit jokingly at the beginning of the video. You know, we have made a few videos about Josh Wah this season. It hasn't been all radio silence talking about this guy throughout the year, but I will say that a lot of the focus that we have had, as well as what other prospect fans have had on social media, has mostly revolved around Lane Hudson this season. We've been making videos about how he's broken all these records and he'd scored all these points and all that, but when it comes to what Josh Waugh has accomplished this season, it's certainly nothing to scoff at too. And you could definitely say that Waugh has had a season this year that's worth talking about to the same magnitude. Last year, Wa played his 18-year-old season in the QMJHL, getting 119 points in 66 games played. He also had 23 points in 11 games in the playoffs, and really, I mean, look, the points speak for itself. You draft a guy in the fifth round, the next season he puts up 119 points in 66 games, that is pretty noteworthy, and it's a pretty good number. However, this season, if you look at the points, you'll see that he actually produced fewer points. He had 99 points in 55 games played and 46 goals. Now, the interesting thing about that is that if you do the math of 99 divided by 55 and you multiply that out by 66, Josh Waugh, if you do the math, was on pace for 119 points in 66 games, which is exactly what he produced last year. In fact, you do the goals as well, 46 goals in 55 games multiplied out by 66, he also had a 55 goal pace. So Joshua, even though the point totals might not be as impressive as last season's, technically had an identical year when it comes to points per game, and an improved year when it comes to goals per game. You also had yourselves the World Junior Showcase. Last year, Wa had 8 points in 7 games played. This was the World Juniors that took place in August, I believe. And the most recent one that happened just a few months later saw Wa put up 11 points in 7 games played. He had a pretty good role. He was playing with some big-name players. He had some time with Connor Bedard, which was awesome to see. But the real meat and potatoes and the reason we're even making this video is because in the last playoff game for the... Sherbrooke Phoenix in the QMJHL. Joshua had himself a hat trick, and he also had three assists on the night, too. He scored himself six total points in one game, which has put his point total on the playoffs up to 18 points in six games played only. Nine goals, nine assists. Now, this is the only statistical category where Wah has really exploded from last year. As we had noted, last season, regular season, he was at the same points per game as he had this year. You could say in the World Juniors, he had a little bit of a better opportunity, therefore he had three more points in seven games. But last year in the playoffs, he only had 23 points in 11 games, which is a two points per game. This season, he's at three points a game, literally six games played and 18 total points to show for it. That's an even three points per game for a guy that, as we had said, was a fifth round pick by the Habs two seasons ago. 
Now, there are a lot of concerns that people could bring up. Everybody's talking about the projectability, what Wah does well, what he doesn't do well, foot speed, IQ, stuff like that. Whether or not he's projectable at the NHL level remains to be seen, but based off of what we have to work with, this playoff run in the QMJHL and just the points and the highlights from that, I mean, the guy got six points in the last game. What else is there that you want? You saw the goals that he had scored. The hat trick goal was a very beautiful one. He kind of takes the puck off the face off and he whips it on goal. Nobody's really expecting it. Even the camera guy doesn't think that Wah has the shot going on at that time. If you go over to the playoff race right now for the Sherbrooke Phoenix, they are in the second round. They're up 2-0 against the Drummondville Voltigeurs. They had swept the Blainville Boisbriand Armada, so they have yet to loss a game. Loss? Lose. They've yet to lose a game so far, and Josh Waugh doing the things that he is doing definitely is helping out in that respect. And because Sherbrooke has been so good, I've seen a lot of people kind of bringing up the idea that, oh, if Sherbrooke gets eliminated, which is a possibility, I mean, they are only up 2 nothing after all in their second series, it's not a given that they're going to sweep the entire playoffs, but if Wa ends up losing out and getting eliminated, there is a chance that he could go to Laval. That is a process that we had seen happen last year. He did play one playoff game with the Rocket. He had zero points, but he was still there as an 18-year-old. It's a possibility for him to go back to Laval once more, but, I mean, Sherbrooke is so good that I don't really foresee them losing anytime soon, thus freeing up Wa to being able to get sent down. You know what I mean? Like, this team is so good that the guy probably isn't going to even get the chance to play in the AHL on some sort of a conditioning loan with his team still doing what they're doing in the QMJHL playoffs. So... For now, we're going to be hoping for the Sherbrooke Phoenix to do what it is that they do. We're hoping for Josh Watt to continue getting three points a game. Okay, maybe that's a little unrealistic, but just isolated right here, the numbers are looking pretty good. The exact same points per game in the regular season, more points at the World Juniors, and a significantly higher points per game in the playoffs. Even though the statistics might not say that Josh Watt significantly improved from last year to this year, there still are enough numbers to kind of make the argument that he has. And he is turning 20 in August, so we'll see whether or not he has the opportunity to, I don't know, maybe play some more AHL hockey for next season if they want to use him there. I think he is allowed to go, right? Because he is 20? Something like that? I think somebody's going to correct me in the comments if that's not the rule. But either way, talk to the comments on your thoughts about Joshua and the way that he has progressed from last season until this season. What are your opinions on how he's been scoring? If you've been keeping up with the QMJHL playoffs and you've been seeing any of these Phoenix games, then what are your thoughts on the way that he's played in these contests? Let me know your opinions in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.